Hello everyone, welcome back to Motion RC. It's Friday, I believe December 11th, episode 47, and uh, about maybe two episodes left before this year is out. So um, answered some questions in the chat. Yeah, that was uh, earlier, that was yesterday. Uh, we went out, <laughs> that was the first beautiful day we got. Dave, I expected to see you out there. It was like... Everyone was out yeah, there. Everyone yeah, everyone was there yesterday. People were playing hooky from work because it was like 65 degrees, no wind, and the day before it was like 30 degrees. So the, the temperature just rose. So we said, that is the uh, the day to go. So um, I was excited because uh, I posted on Instagram a while back. It's funny, I, about three weeks ago, I went out to do an updated video on the 262, and I hadn't realized that the high-performance version was available already. So the high-performance version now is the only version available of it, and it comes with the 2210 in-runners that come in most of the newer 70 millimeter birds, like the Hawk. Um, it originated, I think, with the F-35, was the first model in the 70s to come up with that, uh, that system. So now, you know, they're in the process of updating all the systems, so you get that. So I had two of those systems anyway, so I just dropped them in with the same ESCs on my, that's my original uh, 262. I've had that about three years. Dave, uh, Tired Iron Aviation, George Baker, that was his, and I had a Joe Nall once, we traded something for that, because I always wanted that. So I never actually did an unboxing, I never took a 262 out of the box. That's still the same one, I just popped in the two in runners but um either way it's awesome so when we do that flight review that video will probably be uh next week um but i do have footage from like two weeks before where you know same spot trying to do the same style flying with the outrunners and we'll show you a couple passes where you can hear it on one system the original system to the upgraded i always thought the original system was plenty fast already and uh the in runners I don't know if the sound is different, but maybe it is. It sounded clean. It seemed like it had more power, but if anything, um, that was a four and a half minute flight. My timer on my 262 was always set at about three minutes um, of useful throttle time. I always fly it on your standard 5000 Admiral uh, 50C. So um, the fact that, that everything else was equal, I haven't changed anything in that plane, but dropped the in runners. I was up for 430. Uh, on that flight, and I barely cruised around. I was I was pretty uh, balls to the wall there, if you will, full throttle the whole time. So either way, I always love the 262. I like it because it's different. It's odd looking. I like the history around it, the first jet and all that. Um, but I love, and I've said it numerous times, I love all the jets that have those more straighter wings. They're so stable to fly, um, like the Venom and this one and the T-33. Uh, versus the closer coupled jets like a F-16 and things like that. Um, so I'm excited whenever I get to fly that. And it's one of those models that I don't get out often, but every time I do, Alex just knows. It's I my favorite model. It's my favorite. It's Why don't I fly model. this more often? I just don't get a chance. So I was really uh, happy to get out with uh, the in-runners in it now, and those in-runners are now going to live in that one forever because it is awesome. <clears throat> Oh, sorry, Jameson. I, I forget which one it is. Um, if it's not, I might have said the wrong ones. But either way, uh, a lot of fun. The 262, so that video will be next week. Um, as far as guys, I want to say hi to everybody. Thanks for joining. As always, I see Victor, Air Guardian. We'll be seeing you with that S with the Su-35 uh, later on in the show, of course. Uh, Nate, Jameson there, George Watts, I know Justin was in the chat, Dave Marshall, motion um, sick. you know, motion sick, we're gonna see you in there as well a little later on in the show, that Tomcat video of the air to air was awesome, so there's a little bit of that in there, uh, in this show, cause that was really, really fantastic, so, uh, either way, it's awesome. Oh, so Jameson, it is a brand new one. See, sometimes, I, I don't know. Is it a brand new one? Because I didn't see it in the spare parts as a brand new one. But I'll have to check. Because if so, then I'm going to have to get those and redo it all over again. <laughs> and that's I'll, no problem doing that. But they should be fairly similar, I would I would feel. Now, uh, what's in front of me, guys? So this is the Nexa P40 Warhawk. If you remember, last week, I was hoping to unbox this live last week, but the package was set to deliver last Friday. And of course, when the show ended, it was at the doorstep. So I didn't, it wasn't, it arrived just a little too late. So uh, I held it for the weekend. On Monday, Alex and I filmed the unboxing. I started working on the wings, I believe. We got the that first day. 
We did it in three four-hour spurts, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We got to this point, and um, the only thing I'm waiting on, I need a three-bladed propeller. It comes with a three-blade spinner. Our spec on the product page was wrong, so we're fixing it. Um, they recommended a two-blade propeller, so I sent myself one. We were disappointed. And when I was about to put it on, I hadn't even opened the spinner on the unboxing. I just, you know, had the bag there, and I went to put it on and say, because I was going to take this with me yesterday, and turns out, I didn't get a chance, so so I had to quickly uh, revert. I got a master air screw, uh, three blade propeller um, on the way, and uh, I'm excited for uh, for that to come. But I was excited with the kit. So again, we're obviously filming, and we're gonna try to do either a couple videos on certain parts of the setup. But this was my first Warbird from Nexa. The only other Nexa model I've done thus far was the uh, Tiger Moth. And then I, well, actually the OV-10 now is called Nexa, but originally it was Profly, if you remember. Um, different manufacturer uh, than these newer Nexa models that all came out. But uh, either way, I was excited about it. It took about three, four hours, so about 12 hours I got here. And again, we're filming, so we're stopping, setting up shots. You probably get it done faster. I built a few balsa birds now, so I have a good idea. But... Overall, it's a pretty straightforward uh, build. You know, it's all with these ARF kits. At least you don't have to cover them. That's what I love, because that would be <laughs> darn near impossible uh, for me or a lot of pain. But um, for the most part, I do like like your hinges on the at least on the ailerons and the flaps were already done when you take it out of the box, which is nice. The only hinging you have to do is on your your verti uh, on your horizontal and your rudder, and that's just because you do have to get the slide the horizontal through the tail uh, on here. Now you're seeing uh, footage. Did you just start that? I didn't it's notice. Been rolling oh, it's been rolling. Oh, okay. What so you're saying is really lining up though. So I thought oh, you were okay. Right. So you're seeing at least uh, you know how it comes out of the box. I do like how it comes out of the box. Um, everything you're going to need is there. All the hardware that comes are all individually bagged um, for their steps. The steps aren't as necessarily labeled, but it's pretty obvious that when you grab a bag and you're working on one part, that everything in that bag is going to be used to take help you take care of uh, of that part of the build. Retracts were already installed, which was nice. Uh, in there, so all you had to do on the landing gear was put on the plastic coverings to, uh, you know, scale it out a little more, I guess, to finish it off. But they're already in there, and that wire's already routed through. And you could just see little bits of the build. And again, we're going to have all these, uh, you know, all this coming out. And I'm excited because we had just done that Nexa Hurricane uh, that Patrick Crowisdale put together. So, um, yeah, I want to get out with that one and this one. Uh, I'm excited. So, yeah, and it's a Chinese paint scheme, uh, the Chinese scheme on it. So the roundels are part of the covering. The rudder is covering. The only decals they give you are for the, the shark's mouth, um, the eyes, the, the Chinese lettering, and the tiger, and the numbers um, are the only decals you place on yourself. So, uh, you know, either way... That you know the, the shark's mouth was a pain in the butt. I will say, <laughs> to get it on the cowl, like it's it's a it's it's a vinyl type. It's not the type where of decal that you have to cut the decal out perfectly, peel off the back and then press it on. It's not one. It's not water slide, which I wish it was. I think it would make it a little easier. Um, and it's not one of the ones where you can put the film and then peel the top of the film off. So if there was my one knock on it, it would probably be trying to get that shark mouth on. So I had to cut through the black of the mouth and then sort of overlap it to turn it around the cowl. But I was so, you know, either way, it looks it looks great. And I do like the uh, I do like the fact that you need a three bladed prop because I think it's going to look super scale with the three bladed prop. But as far as the hinging, it's all plastic hinging that give you pinholes. So if you wanted to line it up like that. I ended up epoxying all the pins, and you can still see when we uh, when we come off this footage, I've still got like Vaseline and petroleum jelly in all the in all the surfaces because I'm always so afraid whenever I epoxy hinging that I'm gonna somehow get epoxy in the hinge itself and uh, you know just ruin it. That's the last thing I want to do. But overall, I'm excited. I haven't flown a P40 uh, in a while. I like that it's virtually the same size as you know two of my favorite warbirds to fly which are the flight line single engines the corsair and the uh, spitfire 
you know, and I'm going pretty much, I went exactly uh, based on the stock. You can see I'm using the GP10. This is all the recommended parts that are on our website. So the Admiral GP10 motor with the ZTW 65 amp ESC, that motor's rated for 60 amps. So 65 amp ESC. I had just soldered on some uh, extenders so I can get the, you know, so I could get my, uh, my plug inside the canopy you know, the extenders on those ESCs, but I do like that the ZTW ESC matches up the bullets. Sometimes, you know, when you're doing these, I hate soldering bullets. I'm not a fan of soldering in general. Uh, I can do it, but I can't do it well, if, if that makes sense, or if I do do it well, sometimes it's lucky that I do it well. I try my best, but sometimes it's tough. But either way, it's nice that it all hooks together easily. And uh, I got myself a watt meter, so as soon as that prop gets here, um, you know, I want to run it up and just make sure I don't overload it. Because the recommended prop on our website was a 15 by 8 2 blade. Um, but since it's 3 blade, uh, I went looking for a 14 by 8. So same thing I did with that big P47. I had, uh, you know, I was going to put the 2 blade prop on, a 22 by 12, I think it was. Everybody yelled at me because I need a 4 blade on a P47. So then I went with a 20 by 12, and that turns out to be, uh, you know, turns out to be perfect for it. So cut off an inch when you add a blade. So I went looking for a 14 by 8, but all I saw was 14 by 7s or 14 by 9s. So I actually went with a 15 by 7. So instead, I'm going to down the pitch a little bit. And then I like, I'll keep the size on the front because I'll have a nice big propeller. And then I'm going to spray yellow on the edges. And, you know, you got to have that yellow circle like Jeremy said for me to do, um, you know, make it look good. But either way, so hopefully that prop will be here sometime early next week. I'd love to be able to get this out before uh, we take this Christmas break coming up. Um, but either way, I'm not afraid to fly this one. I just, what I'm excited about... Um, you know, is more of a challenge, right? From what people are telling me, P40s, they're not like P47s or Zeros. Um, they're not going to float maybe as well. But uh, I'm up for it. I'm ready to go. And I want to get out there with Patrick with his hurricane and uh, have some fun. But if you want to take a look around, um, I mean, well, I guess I could show you. I'm going to fly it. So 6,000. This was the, uh, you know, this was the thing. I remember if you guys watched the Nexa hurricane video, Remember, a lot of these models were, weren't necessarily designed originally for, for electric. So if you go electric, like I have here, um, nose weight becomes, you know, the, the thing that you're trying to, you know, to fight against, if you will. So Patrick had said he had to add 24 ounces of nose weight to his uh, Nexa Hurricane, and he was using a big 6000 6S on his. But he was using, he said, all the flight line. Uh, he used the same power system from either the Corsair or the Spitfire, yeah, one of those. One of so I think that motor might be a little lighter. The GP10 is heavier. So I'm going to go. The thing is, it just fits when I get it in there. Like, you got to you gotta manipulate it in the right way. But, I've, but I get it in here. Like, it's a perfect tight fit when it does go in. So let me, there we go. So now it's in. So I'm going to put it in there. I don't have my strap in yet. I haven't I haven't done all that jazz. Let me get Let me get the stuff down. Make sure it sits flush so the canopy can close. But the canopy's four magnets all on there and of course now it's not. <laughs> Whenever you go to do something now that you're live, live. Yeah, now that I'm like, oh, it's hitting my That's the problem. It's sitting on my Hold on. Oh man, chat's going to get Oh, close. there we go. Oh, it came right out. Here we go. My plug is like, I gotta move my my plug. There, there we go. go. Now it's nice and flat. Push that down. I haven't mounted my receiver yet, but there we go. So as far as CG goes, and I'll show you guys. So the book CG on this bad boy is four inches to four and an eighth. So that puts me, there's rivets right here, but that puts me about you know, obviously yours would be different. Don't use them. But there's a corner of two rivets here where you measure. It's basically the fattest point in the camber of the wing. So when I have that in there without a prop, you know, all else equal, let's put it on there. I don't think I was pleasantly surprised. I don't think I'm going to need anything. There we go. Whoa. So I don't have my prop on the front. 
So a 6,000 all the way forward with just the Admiral motor inside and the ESCs up front. Um, I'm right there. So I, I, you know, I was expecting to have to add nose weight. I did it to the Tiger Moth um, when I went electric on that. But, you know, I don't mind flying on a big 6,000, a big 6,000 6S. And uh, I think I'm right there. So the prop's only going to add me a little more nose weight, um, which... I'll take on a maiden at least, and then we can figure it out from there. But overall, I'm excited. She's really pretty. I don't know if I'm going to keep this scheme. This may be the first one that uh, I, I might paint later on. Um, I don't know. It's, it's pretty, though, either way. But once we get all the stock photos again, because now in the photos on this one, again, they didn't come from us. You know, we haven't, obviously... Alex and I can't build every single of these balsa ones in, a, in the course of time to get our own pictures. So they came, uh, in the pictures they showed like a centerline tank, all sorts of stuff. So we have to make some change because that doesn't come in the kit. Um, and maybe it did at some point, but you know, it also looks a different color. Like this looks more gray than the pictures. So, you know, either way, all these Nexa models, you know, not, you know. We might have to go out and update some pictures on these. But I think the scheme, I like the blue and white. Like, Dave, you said you like the scheme. I, I dig it. It's different. You know, it's it's certainly different. But I think I want to try my hand with a little, um, you know, I was thinking more of a camo scheme, like that P-40 Warhawk scheme. Even though I do like the shark, the shark, uh, shark mouth. I always enjoy the mouth. And P-40s have some of the meanest schemes, I feel. So, uh, you know, either way. But I think I should be able to paint this. Like, obviously, they would, it would be great. There are guys at my club. We were talking to a guy yesterday who was there who, like, he loves building. He doesn't like flying as much. So I almost feel like asking him, hey, man, you want to peel the cut and recover it? Um, but either way, what I think I would do if I, if I paint it white, just a light coat of white, what I would try to do is do with Jason Rigney, what you did with, um, with your F4 that we've been updating and we'll get to. Uh, Jason's the guy who sent me the... Uh, holy hand grenade of Antioch back there. Um, but he does the panel lines first, then, you know, paints over them. So I might paint it white where I can see all the rivets and dots and then take chalk or something and re and just copy them over and then paint over it again in a way. So they'll, so those lines will be there. And I'd like to try to do a camo and get back to the airbrush. I haven't airbrushed in a little bit. So, uh, you know, why not at this point? Why not, uh, why not try to do something a little different when we get there? And if anything, I don't know if paint, paint probably wouldn't add weight. I always see those questions asked, like, how much weight would I add with paint? I'm like, I don't think you'd add much, but, you know, if anything, more weight isn't going to kill this one. So I'm excited, though. So this will hopefully be next week. It all depends on when that prop arrives. And uh, But other than that, she's pretty good to go. I'm going to have it on the Futaba. Again, standard six channels, uh, all you need. In the radio, we got oh, underneath, you want to see underneath a little bit more. We've got split flaps. And again, these all come pre-hinged. You just got to put on, you know, the horns. I do like the metal, all metal and steel. You got to, you know, you got to manipulate them. They give you tons of length on the rod. So, you know, you cut them to fit. The pockets fit the, um, which ones did I have? 48, I believe they're the 48... Where's the box? Hold on. 485s, the high-tech 485s. So I had six of those in here, and the pockets fit them perfectly. So they are just drop-in. So one, two, three, four. One for the rudder, one for the elevator. Now, the elevator, it's hard. I would have to take the wing. So the wing, all it is is two nylon bolts that go through. This gets glued on. This is like the last thing you put on these parts. But uh, it's nice because it, it attaches to the wing. So the wing is just two bolts comes off you do epoxy the wings together so they become a one-piece wing um, when it's all said and done so you have to break a few connections uh, to get them apart inside but um what was I gonna say oh the elevator servo is driven two push rods they have like one rod that comes out straight from the horn and then there's that there's like a, a brick uh, with grub screws in there and then the two rods go into that brick for the elevator back and forth and the rudder is just, you know, standard on the other side. But those pockets, again, inside, two pockets fit perfectly with the, those high tech. So all the recommended parts seem to be exactly what we want. And when I get my watt meter, which I have, if 
by the time I get my prop, I'm going to get this set up. And this will be another quick tip coming up because obviously a watt meter is just one of those things. If you're going to be playing with balsa or we always, I always see so many questions and I just saw one today. Somebody said, Oh, can I, you know, if I rip out the motor, if I take the motors out of something and drop it in, just like I did with my ME262, you know, will it work? And somebody made the comment, get yourself a watt meter. So then you don't have to guess anymore. You'll never have to guess if, you know, this ESC can work with this motor or if this propeller can work with this motor and ESC setup. With this, you know, with a uh, watt meter, you're gonna be able to see your amps in real time and you're not gonna have to guess and you're not gonna have to risk burning out an ESC. I think I saw somebody said they plugged in an ESC or something and I believe they showed a melted plane or something and it might, you know, who knows, it could have been faulty or it was, you know, they revved it up and that ESC wasn't rated for the amperage that you just you just sent through it. And, you know, that's when we get the magic smoke. So either way, uh, I'm excited about this little P40 Warhawk. Well, it shouldn't be little. It's 61 inch wingspan. I could read off the spec. If you haven't gone, the link is in the description for this one. But this is a uh, 1570 millimeter, so about 61.3 inches. 1360 in length. I don't know what that is in inches. It doesn't say it here. But then obviously it comes with all the accessories if you want to do gas as well. So, you know, you can go that route. But I love, I just love the cleanliness and the ease of the uh, motors. And I haven't weighed her yet, but she feels pretty significant. I remember Patrick was saying his, his hurricane was like 11 pounds, I believe he said. Whereas a flight line model is like six and a half pounds. So I'm going to say it's got to be at least, at least 10 pounds. And I have the battery inside, but I'm not certain. I'm going to have to weigh that and I'll get back to you on that. But overall, I think she looks cool. I think she's going to be fun to fly because you know me by now. I do love my single engine warbirds here. So let's put that off to the side. What time we got? 22 minutes on that one. Needs a modeling. Uh, yeah, just in, you know, the sound systems, they... They're cool, but I don't know if I would ever want to go. May need to order up a P40 spinner. Bonanza for which? This is the spinner that comes with it, yes. So actually, this is the only thing I didn't attach yet. I just threw the three screws and the baggie inside, so I'll be ready. But um, that's the only thing I had to do. And then for the mount, I just needed to use the drill press and just open up the hole a little bit so the, uh, the back plate fit over the, uh, the shaft of the Admiral GP10 motor. That was it. But very, you know, very simple construction. Nothing, nothing out of the ordinary for anybody who's built any Ed Balsa aircraft before. I think you guys will really enjoy it. Everything fit nicely. And uh, yeah, I'm ready to go. And then you can obviously see some upgrades. So, you know, if people want to get suspension struts, like these are just, you know, sticks there. But I don't expect to land like a... Uh, you know, land like a brick out of the sky, I plan to touch those tires down and drive it home nice and easy. So cool guys. And again, thanks for driving. I don't know how many people are in here with us today, but we are now two weeks from today is Christmas. It's crazy. So if you remember last week, we said next week we will do, uh, next week will probably be our last, uh, Friday show of the year because then the following Friday is Christmas. Alex is off for that week. I'm going to be off for that week. So there'll be no Christmas. My plan is hopefully we'll be coming back on New Year's Eve, which is going to be a Thursday. So uh, if you, again, if you want to join the show, not too many people said it, so this will probably be the last time I mention it. If you want to join the show, you got to reach out on the link in the description of this video. Contact me through, through uh, Squawk. I'd love to have a few of you guys on, but I'm not going to bother if we can't, uh, you know, if we can't get a lot of you guys there. But like GB, Dave Marshall, um, the guys who have been with us for this past year, I'd love to have you on um, and talk to you. But I, I want to know, you know, I want to make sure you guys can do it on a New Year's Eve at, say, noon. And I'll go, you know, I don't mind making that show, you know, a three-hour show, a three-hour tour. I don't mind, you know, however long it would need to be. But I'd love to catch up and, you know, talk to everybody and bring people on in, in segments um, stuff like that. So if you're off and you want to be involved, just let me know. I'm not going to go chase you down. There's far too many of you 
But, uh, you know, if not, then we'll try to come up with something else. Or we might just see you in the new year. So I have no full plan yet, <laughs> if you will. Now that I'm thinking about it, I wish what I wish I should have done. And next year, this is what we have next to do. Year. For next year, the last show of next year, every, now, because I never do it, but all these videos that we downloaded, pictures from the year through Facebook and you know, and, and social, I, I don't save them. You know, it's a lot of computer space to keep safe. You save everyone. I've saved every single, everything. So maybe that's what we'll do. <laughs> Cause I want to go through the show and just say, you know, every week we should sit down. What was the best two things from this show? Put that to the side, Yeah. do it for every show. So then when you come back, that new year's Eve show can be the best of the year show. And maybe it can have an award, you know, like I do want this, you know, that's what I'm looking into. We want this show to have, you know, a reason to watch. So, you know, whether it's a gift card or this, you know, these would be these would be awesome. Uh, best of James, any bloopers? My bloopers for the year is always, where's my cell checker? That's like, <laughs> that's usually my blooper. And it's, and I don't do it on purpose. It just, it's I just, think you do. I maybe subconsciously <laughs> I do, but I don't do it on purpose. I usually check the battery. I put it to the side, get out and then forget it. So, but I think it would be a good idea to do that. So then going through, but I'd also love to do a best of the month. Like maybe if we did like a, I don't know if you guys would be down for that, but if you guys are submitting pictures, you know, I want to make it interactive, right? Like, so maybe like, you know, a monthly, like a $10 gift card, something small, just, you know, nothing crazy, but then it could build up, you know, then the people who won, you know, a month or were part of that, then you're entered for something bigger and something bigger. And it builds to, cause obviously when we hit December, a majority of us are not flying, you know, as much as we'd like to. So we're all in building anyway. So it's better to have, you know, all that stuff to fall back on. But that's stuff we could talk about and, you know, and figure out. But it'll, like a motion yearbook, Justin Link, I think it's a good idea. It's a good idea. So if anybody else takes it, just remember where it, where it started from. <laughs> that would be awesome. But I don't know. Either way. So let's get on with uh, social. We did have a lot of uh, good stuff in the past week, uh, of course. So we'll start with Hobby Squawk. And I believe this is this is Cash Money Brother. He also posted these pics on Facebook. He is Luis Lopez. So now we're starting to put names to faces between <laughs> Facebook and uh, and uh, Hobby Squawk handles. But he's got his BAE Hawk. I do dig this scheme. Uh, I like the, the camo he did on it in the REF scheme. I love a good Hawk. And he even had a picture. It was a little blurry, but uh, he had a picture of some 3D printed ordnance on it, which I liked as well. But... You know, if the picture's too blurry, uh, it's got to be good enough to get on the show, you know? Sometimes blurry pics are not good. Then I came across this one. This was, And again, these pics were all shared in our uh, thread. So if you put it in there, I'm going to put it up here. And you'll see in a minute, it doesn't, as long as it's good, I don't care who it's from, it'll go up. But this actually is not the 90 millimeter. This is 64 millimeter F-22 oh, from Gillitrout. So put some like crazy like invasion stripes on it. And uh, he did that really well. I dig that. I have a 64 millimeter F-22. It's one of the few that I never, uh, I've still yet to fly. Then I believe this one from Paul Kitek. This is a Saber and original scheme, but he decided to just add a little flare to the drop tanks on it, which I thought was cool. He added the yellow. He said help for visibility and I don't mind. But this was the one, so Warbird Fan 66. This is actually an Avios MiG-17. But it looks so nice. I don't mind sharing it because it's awesome. <laughs> and you know, he did an, a heck of a job on uh on this scheme. I think that looks really sweet. So uh, you know, if you're gonna get involved, then I will happily, you know, share that. Especially if you're gonna do that work. I love the cockpit work he did. I even like that he has the red. You know, what do they call the thing that you put inside to block the the airflow? It's like, I remember seeing the F-22 guys were 3D printing those. Um, the covering, I guess Check, that's... We'll let you know in about eight seconds. Yeah, let me know, guys. What is that really called? And what we've, you know, just obviously when they're just static sitting there, it's just a way to protect a plug. That makes sense. You know, just a way to protect, I guess, rust or anything getting in there. So either way, I thought that looked really brilliant. So good job on you, Warbird Fan 66. Thanks for joining. And then we had C. Harriman. 
See, Harry, your man, he had that. If you guys remember in March Madness, he was one of the two. Uh, he was one of the two guys to submit a heli, um, and his was gorgeous at the time. And he pops up in the heli forms. But I guess he went out to a show here in England at a Red Lodge fly-in. He said, and it was a 20-minute video he posted on YouTube. If you guys want to check it out, that link is in the description. It's in the Hobby Squawk thread that's dedicated to this show right now. So you can get there that way. You can watch the full 20 minutes. He walks around. There's a lot of cool scale helis there. So, um, you know, really, really awesome. And I just, you know, if you've ever been to a heli meet, I've been to about two of them now. And it's always fun to see a lot of them all together. You know, a scale heli in general, one of these big Roban ones like we carry, um, are always impressive to see when they fly. But when you can see a lot of them all in one place in all different styles, um, it's really a sight to behold. So I enjoyed, I was skimming through this. I saw this video posted this morning, so I was skimming through it and just adding, you know, just pulling out some of the highlights of it. But, um, you know, sitting there and watching some of them and listening, because there's no music or anything. It's just, you know, raw audio. But he's going around to guys at the table, talking to them about, you know, their stuff. But uh, I dig that. I, I, there, there's a show, there's a heli guy up here that if you guys follow Tired Iron Aviation... George Baker, Steve Hodges, they met a guy who lives up in Dalton, uh, Georgia, where we held our Jolly Good Fly-In. Um, he's a, he's a, he was the president of the club that we worked with, and he built his own molds and like and, and craziness. Like he's He molded out, if you follow Tired, Avi Avi Tired Iron Aviation, uh, they go up there. He's building a huge LB-10 Bronco. He builds huge helis. This guy is like a builder in the builder sense. Nothing he owns is... Uh, you know, he doesn't buy anything other than, I guess, electronics and stuff to put in his uh, molded frames and such. So, you know, he does all the work to get it in there. But it's always cool. They do a heli flying up there. So I've been to that, met up with Michael Rosnick was there and those guys. And it was fun to see all those helis around. So it's, a, it's if you ever see it, you know, heli event in your area, and you, even if you're not into helis, go check it out because it's, it's, they're, they're so impressive when you see them up close. Now, I believe I saw Anders in here. He was the first person to comment. He commented like a half an hour before uh, the show started. But Anders, I saw this. I know you did the smoke at one point, but the blue and yellow smoke for uh, to represent the Swedish bird. I thought that was awesome. I don't know. I, I was looking. I don't think we had video of this in the air. So I'm a little upset that you couldn't have a cell phone out there. I would love to have... Slow motion with the smoke. Slow motion with the smoke. Now I feel like... I have to do it for you, maybe. <laughs> so I live in I live in a state where smoke bombs are legal, so we can do that. We should, we <laughs> we should, should do that. that. I could probably just stick some smoke bombs on them, and uh, and go with it. But either way, you know, I love it. Smoke just all of a sudden started. Now it's two weeks in a row we've seen smoke, 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 smoke. coming off of uh, planes. Then we had Charles Radford. So Charles. Uh, redo i guess he had a little accent he said with his mig so he decided to uh repaint it entirely so he went with this george uh german air force scheme and you can see the next picture uh one that's the actual bird there so that's what he's gonna go for when pretty he good pretty good and he did post a video on youtube um of it flying but it was like hat cam so you actually can't I hate the hat cam videos. I, I, not that I, I, I appreciate people put them on, but I, I never understand in the comments how people can say, oh, that looks great, because I'm, I'm sitting there at my screen, zoomed in, and I'm like, I can't see anything. Like, I can't, you know, only the, the, the close passes, and he, and he didn't do any, like, really close passes where you could have made out that it was a, uh, you know, a German Air Force painted uh, scheme. But I guess he's still waiting for his decals. So if you're out there, Charlie... Uh, please share, make sure you update us when it is finished because that's a that's definitely a beautiful scheme and uh, I'll be excited to see it. David Snyder of Michael Keaton Batman fame. I promise I'll get him in my L39. That's going to happen. But right now I have the only two gifts ever sent to me uh, around my head. Uh, this is his MIG, so he's going for, you know, uh, a scale scheme. But I think yours is pretty basic, your scheme in the sense. It didn't look like it had too much... Um, too much decaling to do on top but either way looks great i love that we're now that people got their migs yes. and they've flown it like they're starting to say all right let's you know let's bust out the paint and let's change it up um before we get to this go to vic because if we're going to talk about mig uh if we're going to talk about mig paint jobs yes 
Vic finally finished his. Vic, this looks tremendous, man. This looks unbelievable. Um, this might be the best plane you've ever done. I, I don't know. What do you guys think? But uh, Victor Shamulus, uh, that's stunning. I, I Having to do just the, you know, I, I, even putting decals on, just doing like, you know, the shark mouth on this P40 next to me. I hate doing that. So getting over all the humps uh, of that, I assume it's a decal. I assume it's not stenciled and painted either way. Um, that decal on the top looks unbelievable. And then somebody else um, clicked through a couple. I forget, Joshua Murphy, maybe? Is it Joshua Murphy? Go up, down, down. Nope, Jets and Wings. J, we're in alphabetical order, right? Yeah. Oh, there it is. <laughs> there it is. I, nope, okay. that's not him. Well, we'll come to him. Somebody else did. It there looks it like somebody. There Paul, it is. Paul Mullen. Paul Mullen. So you got to explain this to me. Vic, which scheme did you do? And then Paul Mullen, I don't know if he's out there, because he posted this, and his is darker. He's got color on his decal. They obviously look like they come from the same squadron. Um, but I'm wondering, is one like a CAG bird? Are they different eras? Um, nobody posted any detailed information of just where it was from. So it's it's hard to kind of do a search to find the uh, historically accurate information. But, um, you know, which one, who did it better is what I'm going to say. Because it, it looks unbelievable. And I, I want to see them fly together. It would be amazing to see. Amazing. I don't know where Paul Mullen lives or what part of the world he's in. But either way, it's funny that we got two, you know, similar... But um, it's awesome. <laughs> RC Irma, I'm the only one sadistic enough to paint logos into planes with stencils. Such a pain. I remember Papa Boozer, though. I remember there's a plane that he did where he painted the nose art. He made up his own nose art and just painted it on the plane. Like, And I didn't realize it until Wes told me that it wasn't a sticker. I thought it was, you know, he's like, that's hand painted. I'm like, whoa, that's even, that makes it even better. Oh, so it is the same, it's the same, so Paul Mullins is not to scale? <laughs> I mean, it's a gorgeous plane. He used a darker paint not to scale. Well, maybe, I mean, I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> That's so funny. But uh, this is awesome. So either way, they're looking great. Uh, might as well go to the Chuck. I threw this in here because I saw a lot of people posted. Um, you know, December 7th, guys, was D-Day. Of course, the anniversary of D-Day. And on that day, oddly enough, we lost one of the, you know, somebody, if you're in aviation in any way, you would have heard the name Chuck Yeager with Glamorous Glennis, the X-1, first person to break the sound barrier. Legend. Legend, yeah, absolute legend, legend um, you know, in aviation. And then I was flying the big P-47 yesterday, and we were talking about him because I think he has... He had 11 kills in the P-47, and he shot down a few 262s. So I had a P-47 and the 262 there yesterday, and it was like, you know, whoa. Um, you know, so we just want to give even a remote shout-out, um, you know, if it matters to anyone out there. But it matters to us. This is a, a legend in, uh, in stuff. Yeah, right? Make the X-1. And it's funny because when, we, when Alex and I first got into it, one of the first things we ever saw was Mac Hodges' B-29 and the X1, and we didn't really understand, you know, I didn't at, no, at that point, like, like that's cool. the history <laughs> of it, and, you know, and that's, it's just unbelievable that, you know, there it is, it all goes around, sort of comes around, but um, either way, that was really cool. Yeah, I guess if you're going to make a B29, it would have to be like 5,000 millimeters wingspan with a, with a scale X1 that could be <laughs> dropped off with its own remote control, and, uh, you know, two people to buy it. So, uh, all right, moving on. Jason Rigney, we finally, so this is the third week in a row, we got the completion on his F4. I so, love that tone of blue. Yeah. Uh, what did it just, like, the looks so good. The blue on it, and he's the one, again, He excellent work on this. He's E4 Dragon Runner on Hobby Squawk, and uh, really well done. You can see the effort that went into it. Great job on the decalings and uh, the decals. And, uh, and the weathering, of course. And I love the way he did those panel lines. That's why I sort of want to try that. And I think I was going to try it on this one. Just do the panel, you know, paint it white. Do the panels deep and exaggerated. And then lightly start airbrushing over those so they sort of pop out. I, I, I think it, it, it really good effect on it. And, uh, you know, it was a way that I, I guess I hadn't seen anybody really try at, at uh, 
you know, in that way, or I got, obviously a lot of people have done that. I just haven't personally come across that before this. So, you know, I'm not saying he invented it, but it looks awesome. Oh, go to Jets and Wings before we get to this video. Uh, Jets and Wings. So this is our friend Rob, who's over in Germany. He helps with some Motion RC videos. He makes some German uh, videos for us at times. Um, but he's doing, he did also, he did the F-15. If you guys remember, he converted his F-15C to the F-15E Strike Eagle. We definitely shared this on the show. And it was one of those when it popped up on social, everybody sort of went, oh my goodness, got to make that. And now he's making a German, and I forget, I think it's a G model. Um, so he had to do some work on the nose. Uh, remember, RF4 comes with two different noses, but I don't think one would be for a G. And you could correct me if I'm wrong on it but uh either way i like the the german sort of iron crosses on it like it's just you know it seems like it was you know stolen which is which is crazy but I, I i love you know i love that i love when you when people take birds and do fantasy like i did with the lippish turned it into an american invasion stripes on it or yeah like believable fantasy stuff is really yeah, cool. yeah 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 like if you know if the germans had stole this or something I want, or... like a little paragraph with like the story behind it you know? yeah like, yeah make, the... make, something up make a it. fake make a fake paragraph that would be awesome but either way he's rob's a good guy he does great work jets and wings definitely check him out um you know Looking good there. Then we got Jeff. So now let, we should go over. Oh, nope, Jeff. I guess we'll go. Where do you want to go? Jeff. Jeff Wheels. So this was a fun video. And uh, Jeremy, I saw you posted. And I'll let this play. It's just three guys flying in, you know, formation, three jets. Woo. Woo. And that's, that's tough to do with three people. It's hard enough to do with two. But getting three people to be lined up, uh, you know, to all stay together and keep your distance but still be close. On camera I thought that was cool it was like a one minute uh, little video that they posted on uh, on Facebook but that made me smile for a minute so well played on those I love that pass and I love the location you know the location is just gorgeous with the mountains in the background I'm not sure where where it came from but either way happy you shared that with us then Joshua Murphy posted this is a uh, what do you call it Las Vegas uh allegiant i forget oh i'm missing a word here but uh either, either way the scheme looks awesome uh, i think it was las vegas knights or something allegiant i mean oh, allegiant is a company i think yeah it might be yeah, the hockey like, team las okay knights, yeah. gotcha las vegas knights allegiant so i guess they get an aircraft and my new york giants don't have a 737 <laughs> <laughs> i went looking when the al37 came out i wanted to make a new york giants uh, There's the jets one. al37 the they jets have one up, the patriots have one <laughs> <laughs> the jets have a jet but they can't fly and, <laughs> with it. but uh <laughs> yeah alex is a jets fan i'm a giants fan i'm having a little better of a season but um what are you going to do? Then we had Kyler Soltz. So this is the whole video that uh, that Jeremy posted. If you guys follow Jeremy, he's been teaching his son. We met Kyler. We watched him fly, and he only gets better and better. But he put Kyler on the sticks of the uh, the MiG-29. And uh, I'm, I'm talking over him probably as he goes. No, but you, there's no sound on it. There's no, oh, there's yeah, no sound on it. I think away. maybe he had music on it or something. But uh, if you want to check it out, it's in our community. But you can... Uh, you know, he maybe get to, I don't know when he, he starts taking off right away. He'll scrub a little forward, but he did an excellent job. I mean, the kid does, the kid can fly. Let's put it that way. It's not even, you know, it's not a question anymore, but, uh, you know, putting, uh, I, I still, I'm, I'm at the point where my son's about to get to this point where I hope to start getting his sticks in his hands. Um, but I'm, I'm, I want to have these videos eventually as well, because that's what our hobby needs any kids getting involved is always awesome he'd get allowance for years if he wrecks that thing that's the thing he doesn't wreck and he, he lands a little you know a little stiff but for his maiden flight if you will on you know on a twin 80 millimeter jet is awesome i can't wait till jeremy puts the sticks in hand of a turbine engine which is probably coming in the, <laughs> in the next year or two or you gotta let kyler try to invert it under the table like you were doing with the f-16 when you run out of space and you have to get rid of one but uh either way tell kyler great job man that was awesome 
I assume he's probably at school, so he's not watching this, but you could show him. <laughs> he's on his phone. Watching. You could show him. <laughs> he Hi, comments. Press one in chat if you can hear us. He, com <laughs> <laughs> he comments right now. That would be so funny. But that was awesome. Luke Hansen, uh, he showed up with uh, loving his gripping, so he posted a couple pictures. He went out and did the proper thing. He maidened it. Oh, wait, Nate, that was the F-35? Oh, then I got the wrong video. I'm sorry. I couldn't see it in the... I'm looking at a little screen. Was that an F-35 Kyler was flying? Because he flew the MiG-29 in a different video than... Jeremy, if I got that wrong, then I'm so sorry about that. I must have grabbed the wrong video. But I'm pretty <laughs> sure I saw him flying the MiG-29 at some point. So, uh, you know, that's it. Thanks, Nate, for the call out. Even I get things wrong. We're live. We make mistakes. Do it live. Uh, Luke Hansen with his gripping. He did the proper thing. Main it first, then going to customize. And he's going with like a splinter cell scheme. So... He said he needs some. He needs to get some other things, but I'm excited to see what he does with this. It's like a Seahawks game. Yeah, I already dig the green uh, on it as well. So, uh, you know, I want to see where he goes with this. So, keep us updated, uh, Luke. I know you're. He probably will. He's pretty active in the Facebook group, if anything, and uh, I'm sure he will. Mikhail Olszewski, uh, Polish L O T or lot, I'm not sure, but another AL-37, they keep popping up, so gotta share them, always, it's amazing how many different schemes, I, yeah. you know, like, we could go through and make a video of just, it would be, if you just put a post, I wonder if you just put a picture up of each individual scheme that's been made for one second, I wonder how many seconds we get, 200, 300, 400 seconds, because it's, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty awesome, you could at least share one every day of the year. Looks like he's I would, I would guess. Asher oh, and actually, he's the guy. If you remember, a long time ago, there was a, uh, there was an F-16 video at this field. So this is like his backyard. It looks really tight, and every, and he was a 70 millimeter F-16. And the guy lands, and people were like, "Oh my goodness, it's amazing he landed that." And now he's got an airliner there, so, <laughs> <laughs> so he's gonna, he's gonna go with it, which is awesome. So, um, that's awesome. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, yeah, Ron for the Hills. Ron for the Hills Mining. Yes, listen to everybody else. We don't we don't carry that product, sir. So it will not be restocked by us, but, you know, find the distributor if that's the one you want and see if it'll get restocked there. Uh, Rudy Villarreal. So this picture isn't so interesting, an L39 to T33, but the next one is interesting because they're both fitted with turbines. So Rudy posts a while, but I never, uh, I would love to have seen this may, uh, tandem flight if they went up because they both have turbines inside. If you can see in there, it's I'm tough to it see, right now. It's but, uh, see. you know, that's the only stuff he gave me, uh, gave us on, on Facebook, but there's a little closer, uh, shot of that, of that vertical picture he, <laughs> he shared, <laughs> um, but, but, you know, uh, either way, both fitted out with uh, with turbines is pretty cool. Oh, and then we have a few awesome pictures. Just got dumped this morning. Stephen Neal, um, if you guys remember, I mean, he used to work. We used to work together at my old in, in the past. Um, he no longer works in the RC industry, but he's out in Australia at the PMAC Club, and they get some unbelievable pictures of everything. They don't just you know, but they obviously a lot of guys at that club have a lot of free wing or flight line stuff and. Some of the pictures he shared are absolutely stunning, like the Yak, and then this one he got of the L39. Keep going. This underneath shot of the Freewing A10 looks stunning. His Emmy, this Emmy 262. I don't know if these are all his. I don't even know if he's the guy behind the camera taking the pictures. I have to ask him. But somebody at the club knows how to photograph a moving object and get some stunning uh, shots. So the B-24, you got the A-6, the intruder, and it's rigged out, fully loaded. Then this F-22 shot almost looks Ooh, real. That looks mean. Even though part of me's thinking, like, would they be that dirty? You know, like, <laughs> it's, you know, I don't know if they'd make them that, but it looks awesome. And then this shot just behind, like, really puts it in perspective that it is just a model. Um you know, from underneath, somebody weathered that up. I was at that club many years ago. Uh, it's a beautiful facility. And then you got the Hawk, 
also beautifully painted don't even and recognize it in that yeah That's like awesome. it it looks unbelievable yak head on just to get a head on shot like that obviously long lens depth of field the lighting's perfect it's it's awesome it's dirty but is it that dirty, Nate? That's what I'm. That's what I'm trying to say. Is it that dirty? Should it be that dirty? They never get touched. Then we had another one, Thomas Mike. Just an awesome F18. Thought that scheme was pretty nice to see pop up. No more information on it, um, but I like it, and I think that might. And then what else do we got? Oh, Tim Quasney. It's Tim, not Tom. I wrote it wrong. <laughs> and then he just had two of my favorite birds. Um, out there the flight line spitfire and the corsair together i like to bring them out when i go out together as well so that'll do it for the facebook uh roundup and wow it's already 12:50. see how fast it goes by there's so much stuff that you guys share and i want to try to get it all in there's so much stuff i probably leave out um but i'm putting too much stuff in these so then we'll go to youtube uh and we have a couple videos let's start with justin i see him in there so justin you have to I would lower the sound a little bit. He used, he definitely used uh, Still Dre, so we can't play that, but um, awesome video of him flying his Gripen, doing crazy uh, high alpha. And if you want to get, I know it's, <laughs> I know the, the forums are going nuts with uh, back and forths of, in a lot of these forums of uh, how to fly these things, but either way, regardless, this video should be watched just and enjoyed. <laughs> He's got it set up uh, stock, I believe, right? Uh, you said, Justin, you got it set up um, as it should. No TV, because obviously that's not available just yet. So this is just as it is. It'll probably only get better Next time here. we see you, Justin, I will lay on the runway underneath you <laughs> as you fly over me with that thing. That would be I awesome. I trust after watching this. He's got the trust. There was one, uh, one pass where I thought he was going to lose it at the end there, <laughs> but he managed to drop the nose and just get out of dodge first. I think it's this one. He comes by, he comes by, and I'm like, oh, it's gone. He drops it, just gets enough speed to get out of there, but then stays in the, uh, you know, stays in the alpha as he goes out. So, you know, risky business going on over there. And either way, it looked awesome. So definitely check out his full video because he has a lot of, uh, you know, the video's a lot longer if you guys, you know. And then obviously he'll answer questions. Justin's good about that and help you get to that point if that's what you want to do with your, uh, you know, with your Gripen. So then moving on, let's go to, well, let's go to the Air Guardian, cause he always, you know, he's got a couple of his favorite models. He posts a lot of videos, but Air Garden, he's always in here. This one he called Holy, uh, what was it again? I forget how you, you titled it. Holy Aerobatics from Un the- uh, Unholy. Unholy, Unholy Aerobatics. So the Unholy Hand Grenade of Antioch. Um, <laughs> But uh, this is just like a minute and 20 seconds of his 21 minutes video. Uh, I'm happy that you didn't put any crazy music in there, but, you know, so we could actually show some of it. But I just tried to find, you know, a good unedited section that had a lot of the craziness in there. And I'm sure, you know, it gets crazy, it's but you like definitely want to... on an anti-gravity machine, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> just like clicks off gravity for a second and goes and flies. Well, that's the beauty of this model. Like, I mean, this is what... I, I haven't had a chance to get back out with mine after I had so much fun with it. But, you know, I want to because he just makes it look... It, it looks it's so one of those... It's just so different. Yeah, it's just... It's, it's a... It's a it's an unholy it's a wholly different experience than than most jets and that's why you guys are gonna love it the guys like you're already feeling out the gripen when you get the TV on that that's gonna be awesome and then I know um, RC Castle f put up that the uh, the Mig units uh, TV units are coming guys we're gonna be getting them they're on the way to us uh, I'll you know hopefully we'll have a web page up as soon as possible. Um, so anybody interested in that with their MIGs, you know, that's coming. So that's something we're going to look forward to, uh, seeing and doing in 2021. I would think is probably when you're going to see them, uh, early 20, probably January ish, uh, for us. Then we got, uh, let's go to, oh, RC Tommy, RC Tommy, love his, uh, a uh, Grumpy RC, a TV unit is thrust vectoring. So that SU-35 you just saw has thrust vectoring on the uh, attach of the motor so the nozzles can direct the airflow out the back just like the real thing and uh the gripen's gonna come with one 
um, or an upgraded option. And it really just, you know, there's so many reasons that thrust vectoring is fun, but as far as RC, it's just going to give you a lot, I would assume, a lot more control um, of what you want to do with your model. It could take a model and make it more aerobatic. It could make it, you know, crazy. So, uh, you know, it was awesome. So then we have RC Tommy. I love his channel. Just they film it so crisp. And uh, it's usually all jets, but it was nice to see this pop up. It's the Nexa uh, Twin Otter. We have that uh, guy at our club, Lewis, who had, we had done a video. It wasn't on this one we did it with Lewis. We did a different Nexa. He has this one, but so we're going to get out eventually and film, you know, film that one because I'm interested in the Twin Otter. But uh, looks absolutely beautiful, Tommy. Lo again, I love the flying sight. And just that one little... And again, that's just a minute. I'm only going to give you a minute. you got to go to his channel and check out the whole thing. But the whole flight is exceptional. But that was just some really nice, slow and relaxing, you know, flying. Which is always needed. I Sometimes it's fun to just have something that you don't have to think about. And you could just have some slow flight fun and play with a rudder. You know, that's what... That's where you get that or differential thrust on something like that if you wanted to and have some real fun. And then lastly, in uh, YouTube, we will get going with Motion Sick. So if you guys remember last week, he was up there with um, Slay uh, Motion. If you're in here, Motion Sick, I forget, Slay, Slay Master it was called. They had all the Spitfires in the air. But he has FPV in his Tomcat and then... I believe somebody's on a DJI rig or something, or no, it's another jet looking backwards. So he's, you know, FPVing and staying right on this guy's tail to get this awesome, um, you know, footage out there. And if you want to watch the whole thing, uh, they got wings swept and they're Slay Tech. That's it. Slay Tech. Whoop. He's there. So motion sick. RC. Uh, I just, I, I didn't realize I wasn't subscribed. So I subscribed as motion this morning. Um, you know, when I saw this or yesterday, uh, when I did it, but, uh, either way, man, that's like one well, he does some really cool stuff there. And it seems like they just keep exploring those boundaries. So, uh, that was awesome and, uh, looked really awesome. So that about wraps up the, uh, the social tour. So again, guys, if you have any questions, you know, I'll leave the next five or so minutes open. If there's anything you guys want to ask me for this week, um, and while I'm waiting to see questions pop up, I did get the P47 out yesterday, um, but I, I realized I finally got a chance to get a bunch of flights in in a row. We got about three or four flights yesterday, and uh, I'm still feeling out before I make the video of it. It's just, um, I think what I have to do, I have to lower my, I'm going to, I have to move in my elevators and my ailerons are moving a little too quick for me. It's like, it's, it's pitching up too much and I'm just, you know, I just gotta, just gotta ring it out a little more. So I got to bring it back and, uh, I'm going to move in all the, the arms on my servos. It's tough to do when you're at the field with these big things. Um, so I'm going to move in all the arms and, and change some things. But eventually that fit. It's flying great. It lands awesome. It floats. I just, you know, want to get to a point where I'm really uh, comfortable with it. Uh, Bonanza, what's the word on FPV being offered now? Have you flown it yet? I've flown FPV a lot. Um, we sell a setup and, you know, we sell our X-Wave goggles, which are on the table behind me. We've got some ZOHD options, and we plan on getting more options because also, I'll grab it over here. If you guys, and you might not hear me, let me come back, but if you guys check our website, we're going to be getting a lot of the ZOHD FPV compatible, you know, FPV. They're pretty much, all these options are made for FPV. So FPV is going to be... Uh, coming to Motion RC in a bigger way, I guess, in 2021. Um, but FPV is awesome. It's it's a whole different uh, experience. And what I always liked about it, I mean, again, it puts you in the cockpit. Um, like Alex and I, we both started with FPV almost. We never thought that we would be I able. Got, I never got off it. He never got <laughs> off of it. Yeah, he does the drone chase. But like, you know, I started there because I was always, I'm like, I'll never be able to. The orientation just always looks so tough. So I started because I'm I'm a product of video games. I was born in the 80s, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, all that. First person video games. So when somebody put goggles on my head and put me in a plane and all of a sudden, oh, up is up, left is left, right is right. It was easy. I was flying immediately. Um, 
And then when I started to take the goggles off, I was able to then put myself in the cockpit of the plane and it helped with my orientation. So it was odd how I learned how to fly, but that was sort of how it happened for me. So getting back into FPV is always easier for me. It's just, you know, it's again, orientation doesn't matter when you're when you're flying FPV, which is fun. So FPV overall is fun. I'm working on it. I've got you know, a setup, I'm gonna meet up with Patrick and we're gonna tandem our T-33. So I made a canopy. I've shown this before, I haven't gotten out there with it yet. Um, so I wanna FPV a jet, that's something I have yet to do, but we did a video on, on that a little while. It's really the landings that you gotta get with and the worst part about FPV sometimes, if you, you know, <laughs> if you lose signal on the camera, like ah, it's happened to everybody, it's, it's rough if you, uh, you know, if you lose it. Um, head tracking might, might be coming. I'm mean, sure there's going to be a whole lot of options for the FPV community for Motion RC. Um, you know, we wouldn't be getting a lot of this stuff if, if we didn't. What about the FAA involved FPV? Um, I, I can't speak on that at this point. Whatever will be, will be. But we're going to continue on. As if not. I saw somebody say something about an FT, F-15E. I saw that post, if that was you, on, a Facebook, that would be awesome. All of it would be awesome. I'd be happy to see anything. So, uh, you know, that would be awesome. Yeah, John VSC, pan and tilt on the sliders. That's what I'm probably going to do manually. Um, or I was thinking of putting the pan on the rudder a little bit, you know, so when you do make a, you know, when you do make a turn, you, you add some rudder in there or mix the rudder into the ailerons, then mix that into that. So, uh, you know, it all moves when I turn, so it, at least it turns a little bit. What are people looking uh, at? Somebody said, what's the mini Spitfire hanging on your wall? The mi right. Oh, this guy. That's just a, oh. <laughs> that's a, just a, one of those like Airfix models or something. It's a plastic little model. I had put them together and then just sprayed them silver. Those are not, uh, you know, those aren't that's RC. Set that's just set dressing. That's just for me. But it's funny. That was the one Alpha, like, I glued it in, and now I lost the dihedral of it, and he called me out for it. He managed to see it behind. <laughs> he said, you're Spitfire. You're Spitfire. So I guess I had it on the wall too much, but now it's like, I have to, like, raise it up. I don't know. How it's one of those classic. That? I don't know how Alpha spotted <laughs> that when it was like this on the set, but I'm like, dude, you're, you're insane. <laughs> Robot eyes. There we go. So, is there any? Uh, did you have the, any footage of the P forty seven? Yeah, I was playing it. Before oh, you were playing. Oh, okay, I, I, all right. I'll cue it back up again. I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, she looks good, man. I'm yeah. so happy uh, to be flying this thing. It's it's large and in charge, but uh, I just got to get it set up to the point where I feel fully comfortable with it. You know, like I said, I think the servos just I have too much resolution or not enough um, with where I had placed. There was no book to follow, so. Being at the field, it's tough to do any sort of those changes when you're when you're out there going. And I didn't realize that that would be, I was trying to play with my expo, trying to play with my rates, you know, but it's all trimmed out and ready. And I still just feel like when I pull up on the elevator or if I move the ailerons, they'll, you know, they're just a little too, you know, non-scale like. So I want to get it to the point where it's scale before I, I make the full, the full video. Uh, Bonanza, that P-47 comes just like that, uh, covered. It's an ARF kit like our Zero. It's a black horse model. Um, it's awesome. Yeah, tail wheel, everything works. <laughs> I remember the first time I, I put it up uh, with the electric retract, if, you know, I went to bring in my gear and I was flying a little too fast, so one of my gear got stuck. You really got to, you know, bring it up, slow it down, bring the gear up, get it ready. You know, it's settled, but either way, she's... She's unbelievably gorgeous. So, you know, I'm happy to hopefully, you know, soon get the uh, get the official flight video of her out there. But it was nice yesterday to have her out and, uh, you know. The crowd was going wild. The crowd was going, yeah, every time it went up. That was the hardest thing because yesterday it was so packed. I had it sitting on the taxiway and like three or four people decided to just throw their little planes up in the air. And I looked down, I'm like... Can I? So I just like revved the throttle and sat it on the runway. <laughs> so everybody went down like, please, let me just fly this. You will enjoy it. Um, you know, but either way, it was, it, it's a fun bird to fly. It's really nice. And then once it's done, I'm going to add those three lights under the wing. So that's what I'm excited about too. I just got to figure out how I'm going to do it. Because the beauty about the Black Horse model versus um, 
Well, now this one's sheeted too. Uh, but you know, it's got sheeted uh, balsa on the wing, so you can really cut in and you'll have places to mount lights because those three P47 lights that go under the wing, it's easier than if it was just covering and ribbing. It would be harder to figure out exactly how to do it, but it's, you know, the, it's all sheeted, so you have a place to mount it and make it look even more, even more scale. And then Alpha's gonna help me still uh, finish off that, that hub, because that hub on there is a 3D printed piece that I wanted. So, um, you know, just to make it scale, because there's no, there's no spinner on the P47, it's just a prop nut. And uh, I didn't need any nose weight, so I didn't need a big prop nut. So Alpha just, I just gave him the measurements of what the prop hub was and said, yo, print me out this. And he printed me out just the piece. And now he's going to add the four little pieces that sort of wrap around the, uh, the, the prop. And that'll give it that almost final completion, which will be awesome. So uh, any other questions? I, I don't know if I missed any. Let's see. Through here, any chance motion will get into 105 and 120? Uh, motion will. I don't think free wing will, if that's what you're, uh, if that's what you're asking. You know, at some point, I mean, Black Horse makes a couple 105, uh, you know, size kits. I mean, it would probably come in a kit version. Uh, there aren't too many. You know, I think there's only one manufacturer for foam that makes those, and you know, they're awesome, but you know, they don't work with us. Yeah, I love the shot as it's pulling in. It really but does. But that's that thing. It looks epic. It does look real. <laughs> <laughs> it looks awesome. It's just so big. It's so fun to have there. It's awesome. And it fits in a minivan. You know, the wings come <laughs> off pretty easily. I, I put the two wings right next to each other, bombs out, because I don't take any of the ordnance off. And the, uh, and the fuselage just lays in a standard tray, because uh, the center line tank can fit right between the tray. And then I just bungee it down, and it, and it fits beautifully. There you go. Mm -mm -mm. BF109 for Flightline. I hope so, Motion Sick. I would love to see a Axis or, you know, uh, yeah, an Axis-powered single-engine Warbird from Flightline. I'd love to see it. We got the Spitfire. We got the Corsair. I would love to see that. Uh, Birkin Skynetic Line, that was a factory that just got, you know, the COVID bug. They're on their way. It's, you know, it's just like... You got to realize things that are out of stock right now, there's nothing to do with sales or anything. It's just the world is a crazy, crazy place. And right now, uh, you know, add a global pandemic where everybody is now, you know, tons of people are ordering things they normally would just drive to the store and get. So that is, you know, causing shipping stuff. And then you have Christmas and the holidays now on there. So it's like... You know, this is everywhere, not just not just RC. You know, it's all coming. Um, it's just when it gets here, it gets here. So I've been waiting for a Havoc as well. What will be my first gas flyer? Uh, my first gas flyer is probably going to be one of these two big black horse models, either that P47 or the big zero I got. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the conversion to gas. So that's my plan for hopefully by this time in 2021, I'll have done that. And then I'd like to do a, you know, something small like this. One of these Nexa birds do a smaller uh, gas engine on it. But that's my plan for 2021. I'm going to set a goal where I want to fly my first gasser and I don't want it to be somebody else setting it up. I want to set it up and, uh, you know, I'm going to ask for help from the guys. You know, I have a lot of guys at the club who are going to help me out. A lot of our customer service guys can help me. I can always call one of them and get help with. But uh, I want to use either an NGH motor. I would love to use that one of those new Admiral motors because we have the Admiral 60cc engine now and a 125cc Ooh. engine, which I would love to see. But uh, the 60cc should just fit perfectly on these bigger Black Horse birds we got. You know, that's why we're carrying it. So, um, you know, I'll probably start there and, uh, you know, give it a roll. Let's do it. I think it'll be great. Giant scale electric. I, I, again, electric for me, Justin, um, giant scale, it's just so easy and clean. Uh, <laughs> I like the sound of electric. I mean, these things just sound so, you know, they aren't loud and obnoxious. Yeah. They sound so nice in the air. And I find all the power I need. I, I love it. You know, it's very easy to manipulate inside. Um, you know, you got a lot of space. You're not dealing with throttle and it's not messy, things like that. Um, but either way, you know, I appreciate gas whenever I say I'd love to see a big, I would love to see a big gas. And again, we do have a guy who has two of our Black Horse models 
um, you know, all gassed up. We're just, he just doesn't want to fly them at the field. He was there yesterday. And I'm like, when are we going to do? He's like, I don't want to fly them here. He believes the field isn't big enough for them. And I'm like, you just saw me fly the P-47. I've flown the zero here. They're 93 <laughs> inches. Like, bring them out. Let's do it. Um, but we want to, he wants to go to an actual airport um, that's nearby. We just got to set up a time. And right now the weather isn't good. So, uh, you know, the plan is though, uh, we are going to go out. And he'll have the Spitfire and the P-40 from Black Horse that you saw me unbox. They're both gassed up and ready to go. And I'll have now the uh, the Zero and the P-47. So we'll do some tandems with an electric and a gas together of similar size models. And, you know, have some fun. So either way. But that's my goal for 2021. So I'll get started with that and do it. <laughs> Michael, I already have a lot of gas. But, uh... <laughs> smell smoke on your website i don't know if we can smell sell smoke i mean i don't know i guess i don't know how that would work if it's is it considered like a oh, like explosive a firework, a firework. Yeah. I, I you know smoke oil probably is something you can do you know like the tank the stuff that's in the tanks but then you wouldn't see that stuff you know i don't think you know it works good on a static tank driving two miles an hour but i don't think you'd see it much if it was uh, in a plane Taco Bell. I had Taco Bell yesterday, actually, and I'm still doing all right, GB. Thanks. <laughs> My daughter had Taco Bell for the first time in her life. She's wow. eight and a half. I, we just don't do it. And I'm like, I can't believe I've deprived you. My friends all think, they're like, wow, that's child abuse. <laughs> she has it out of time. She loved it, too. I'm like, uh-oh. Uh, swivel poster, I doubt it. Racing drones, probably not. Big sad. That's, uh, you know... <laughs> I think that that's that market's been cornered by a few and you know it seems like racing drones are a little how do you say it's like either you're all in or you're all out there's no in between either it's like you're trying to get on tv to be a drone racer it's an expensive hobby to try to get into um you know oh justin just said that's probably a taco bell what i know right i taco bell used to be the thing it's not not my style. If I'm going to eat Mexican, I'd rather go to an actual place. You know, I'll stay away from fast food as long as I can. I only do it if, if I need to. It's child protection. There you go, GB. That's how I, that's how I thought it. But either way. So guys, now that we're, we're talking about Taco Bell, uh, I think that means we should call it because it is now 112. Um, and see, these shows just fly by. You know, every week sometimes, like, do I have enough for the show? And, you know, I always have more than enough for the show. Thanks to our great community. Thanks to our great community. Exactly. You know, like, we wouldn't be doing it. It would be a boring if it was just me trying to talk about all this stuff. It's fun to see everything you guys are doing. It is December 11th. I can't believe it. Uh, 2020 finally going to be out the door. So next week will be the last Friday show of the year. Um, and then we'll figure out at that point if, uh, if there's going to be a New Year's Eve show. We're still not sure. But obviously the week of Christmas, we're not going to be here. So for next week, if I get the prop, hopefully we're flying this. If not, we're going to, you know, we will come up with something. There's some stuff that we can do for sure. Um, and then we could talk about, you know, anything you guys want to talk about here. So save whatever questions you have. Or jump in Hobby Squawk, guys. Um, you know, again, you could PM me in there. You could PM us. Send us private messages. Obviously, it's tough to answer questions directed at us within threads because sometimes threads go nuts and there's eight pages of stuff you got to try to read through. But, you know, that always makes it tough. But, guys, thank you so much. Have a great weekend. If you're flying, fly well. And if you're not flying, build well or assemble well. And as always, thank you so much for joining. And we'll see you next week on the 18th for another edition of Motion RC Live. Later, guys.